Hi, Timothy Ungert here. In this video, I'm going to compare C++ versus Python versus Ruby for my needs, okay? And what are my needs? Well, as fate would have it, I seem to be going back into the teaching profession for uh, teaching high school mathematics. And I want to be able to create uh, worksheets quickly, right? So by writing a program, I can create a worksheet of a thousand problems. And I've done that in C++. I did a worksheet last night just to test it out. And it took a millisecond to, or fractions of a millisecond to run the C++ program. I'll show you that in a moment once we create the program and create a thousand problems. I then tried you know, going over to a hundred thousand problems, but at that point there's other parts of my computer that struggle with it once I switch from uh, you know, because uh, I, I create an HTML file and then I convert that to a PDF. So my computer and my IDE are having more problems with the HTML file being that large. Um, so really a thousand problems is my limit. I mean, after that, it just gets ridiculous, right? Uh, so let's create in C++, let's create a worksheet where students have to uh, multiply two binomials either by FOIL or double distribution. Now, if you don't remember mathematics, Let's just write this out. Let's do a comment here. Uh, FOIL, what does that stand for? It stands for first, uh, outer, inner, last. Okay. So basically what that means is that we take, uh, basically we take some binomial. Let's say we create a binomial 2x plus 3 times 4x plus 5. Uh, and this will be how we create the problem. I'm not going to go through double distribution in this video. It'll get too long. But we're going to do the first terms times each other. So 2x times 4x would give you an 8x squared. Okay. And then we're going to do the outer term. So 2x times 5. That's going to give you a 10x. And then we're going to do 3 times 4x, the inner term. So that's going to be 12x. And then 3 times 5, the last term, the last terms are going to be 15. All right, so that's going to be an 8x squared plus 22x plus 15 for our solution. And the way I'm going to write the program is to use FOIL, okay? So we're going to actually write that in the program. So I'm going to write it in C++, and I'm going to write it, and we're going to run it in C++, see how long it takes, 1,000 problems. Uh, and we're going to write a function to also create solutions in C++. And we'll look at the lines of code that we have to write in C++ to get the program to work. It'll be about 50 lines of code. Then we're going to compare that to Python and compare it to Ruby and also run a thousand uh, or run the program for a thousand uh, problems in both and see if there's a noticeable difference. And that'll kind of help me too. I'm doing this video to help me decide what I should do for my programming focus while I'm teaching high school math. Um, okay, so let's get started with the C++ program. So there's gonna be a couple header files that I need to include from the standard library. So those are gonna be uh, IO stream, so for input output, okay. I'm also gonna include C time, and this is gonna help me uh, with basically, um, creating a random number. We're going to use that to help create a random number. And we're also going to include uh, fstream, okay? And that's going to be useful for writing to another file, for writing to the HTML file. Now, at the top, I'm just going to say something like using namespace std. So that's the, you know, standard library that we're using. And let's now create our main function. So we're going to create a main function here. And then within our main function, what we're going to have is four integers for each of the binomials. So two integers per binomial. So I'm going to create uh, an n1, n2, n3, and n4 for my four integers. And we're going to have two files. And the way I'm going to create those files, I'm going to create variables uh, using this fstream header file. And it's actually ofstream or type OF stream, and I'm going to call the first one worksheet and the other one solutions, all right, because we do want to have our solutions. Okay, and then to create the actual file, I'm going to do worksheet.open, and then the name of the file, so I'm just going to call this foil.html, and then we'll also do solutions.open, and we'll do uh, uh, foil 
dash solutions dot html okay and up oh, and i forgot a semicolon so my ide is letting me know hey i'm using c line for this my ide is letting me know hey don't uh forget those semicolons there okay and now we're going to seed uh the uh, random variable so we're going to type s rand and then in parentheses unsigned and then outside of here we're going to press uh type time and then null pointer here okay so this is how we are creating our random numbers in c and now i want to create a loop where i'm going to uh basically loop through and create a thousand problems so i'm going to say four int i equals zero i is less than 1000 i plus plus okay and then here let me move this up for you we're going to create each of the random variables each time through loop so i'm going to say n1 equals rand uh, and then modulo 25 plus one that's going to give me a random number of between one and 25. And if you multiply 25 by 25 by 25 by 25, that's something like 680,000. So that should be the amount of unique solutions. And now I'm gonna create uh, the other variables as well. So I just duplicated the line and we'll just rename it here. Do that quickly, okay. All right, and so now we wanna start writing to the worksheet. So we're gonna say worksheet and we're going to write an open div so we're going to do div and then a slash n there and then solutions and we're going to do uh, div and a slash n there okay uh, now we probably want to go and create some functions here so let's create uh, a problem function up here okay so um yeah so i'm going to do string uh, create problem and it's going to take in an integer uh, I don't like when it does this sorry integer we'll call that num1 an integer we'll call it num2 an integer we'll call it num3 another integer we'll call it num num4 and then an integer we'll call that index okay and then what the function is going to do is going to return the problem so we want to return uh, and we're going to return a string. So we're going to start with a paragraph for HTML, and then we're going to use this uh, to string, and we're going to type in the index here. Um, and yeah, and the index will be i plus one once we run this program. And then we're going to have a plus sign here, and we'll have a, a closing parentheses around the number and a space, and then we'll say simplify, okay? And then a colon, and then an opening parentheses. That's where we're gonna start our binomial. And what we'll do here is we'll do a two string here, and we'll pass in num1. And I'm just, so this doesn't get too long, I'm gonna wrap this down here. Okay, so that was num1, and then we'll do x plus, because it's, integer one is the coefficient of x so we have x plus and then we've got to go plus to string here uh, we're going to do num2 and then plus um, then we're going to close that parentheses for that binomial so close that parentheses and then open the next parentheses and we're going to do another plus and then two string uh, it's going to be num3 and then plus um oh yeah and we got to do x plus and let's just move this down so you can see it okay so that's the uh, coefficient in front of the second x in the second binomial um, and then we're going to do uh, two string here and we'll do num sorry num4 okay and then let's see, after that, we're gonna have to close out this binomial. So closing parentheses, put a period, close out the paragraph here, and we'll do a slash end to move down to the new line there. And so that's our creating problem function. Okay, we also wanna create the solution. Okay, so let's work on that as well. So we're gonna have here a string, 
and we're it's going to be a function that returns a string and we're going to call it create uh, solutions here and we'll take in uh, i don't know why it keeps doing this pop-up it's kind of annoying so we're going to do int uh, num1 num2 uh, num3, uh, num4, and then and then the index. We're going to pass those in as well. Okay, so now inside this function, let me close out the side here. So yeah, that'll help you see it a little bit better. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create variables for first, outer, inner, and last, because we're going to do foil here inside the function. So I'm going to say int first, and that's going to equal num1 times num2. Oh, sorry, num1 times num3. And then we're going to do outer. That's going to equal num1 times num4. And then we're going to do inner. So we'll do inner, and that's going to be uh, num2 times num3, the two inner numbers. And then we'll do last, and that's going to be uh, the last number of each binomial. So num2 times num4. And we'll also want to create a middle variable where we add the outer and the inner. Because remember, we did that when we were doing foil. Okay, so we're going to add the outer and the inner there for our middle. And we're actually going to use the middle. We're not going to use outer and inner in our string that we return. And we will use first and last, however. So we're going to say return. And again, we'll start it with a paragraph here, paragraph tag, because we're writing to an HTML file. And then we'll do two string uh, index. Sorry for the pop-ups. My ID likes to pop up some stuff, especially when I'm in presentation mode here. Okay, so we have our, our number of our problem, our parentheses, space, and then we're going to do uh, X. Uh, nope, I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. We're going to go to string, uh, pass in the first variable, then we'll add that to X. And actually, Am still, am I still getting, no, I'm not getting ahead of myself because we don't have the parentheses anymore because we are multiplying it out. Okay, and that's x squared. So we're gonna do a superscript here in HTML. That's gonna give me an x squared. And then we'll do plus here and go down here and we'll do uh, a plus sign here. And then we'll do another plus. We're all concatenating this together to string um, middle. And then plus, and that has an x, that's in the coefficient of x is middle. So we have the x there, and then a plus, and then two string, and last, and then a plus, a period, and the closing parentheses, and a new line character there just to uh, format the created HTML file. Okay, so now we've got our two functions here. And what we want to do is call them and use them to write to the uh, file, the regular file, foil.html, and the foil solutions.html. So I'm going to say worksheet, and I want to write, I want to call the create problem here, and we're going to pass in uh, n1, n2, n3 n4, and then for our index, we'll pass in i plus 1, because remember, we started at 0. Okay, and then for our solutions, uh, we're going to do create solutions, and we'll pass in n1, n2, n3, n4, uh, and i plus 1. Okay, and so now we're writing to our solutions worksheet with the same random variables. So it's going to be consistent and the solutions will be well done. And then we're going to do worksheet and we're going to write a closing div here. So closing div tag uh, slash n and also do solutions. And we'll write a closing div tag slash n there as well. Okay. And now we'll go outside of here. And we'll do worksheets or worksheet.close or close that out and solutions.close. We'll close that out. Whoops. There we go. 
And at the end of this function, we want to return zero. Hopefully everything will run fine. We do have some warnings here, you'll notice, and let's just take a look at those. So, uh, so it says random number generated seeded with a disallowed source of seed value would generate ridiculous sequence of values. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to just, uh, well, I could show quick fixes. And we could go here and just uh, suppress this warning for the file. Okay, so we're going to do that. And we got this line here, pragma clang diagnostic pop. So that, uh, so this also says rand has limited randomness. Use a random library. I'm not going to do that for this one, but uh, thanks for the warning. So we're going to inspect clang tidy options and suppress for the file. Okay, and the typo and word of T anchored, but that's that's the way it's spelled. Um, okay, so it just basically put up these lines here, my IDE, which is ignoring that, and now we don't have those warnings, and we should be good to go. So I'm going to open up a terminal, and we're going to run this with G++. So I'm just going to type G++, and then actually, let me see, what did I name this file? Oh, yeah, FOIL. G++, and then we'll do FOIL.C++. So we're compiling and now let's run it and instantaneously it's done. Okay. So that's how fast it's done. And then if we go over here, we see that we've got this HTML file created and these solutions uh, created. So fractions of a millisecond created that. Let's open up the HTML file here. And uh, it's going to take a moment to analyze, especially when I'm, uh, you know, running the video. This is where my IDE runs into a problem if it's a really big file. So no problems are found. Okay, so it's able to scan the thousand file pretty easily. We go all the way down to the bottom, we see a thousand. All right, so it's created a thousand problems. To make this look nice and um, to make it look nice, let me go to the top here uh, and go here. Okay, and then we'll just go here and I'll do the uh, uh, exclamation point and hit tab. That's just an Emmet trick and I hit tab and it takes a moment because again, this files where the where my computer is having issues is with uh, not the creating the thousand problems. It's um, running the HTML file, especially with the video going. So we'll just title this uh, 1000 problems created uh, or 1000 foil problems, something like that. Yeah, and then I'm going to get rid of this here. So I'm going to cut this out and we'll just, uh, so we'll cut it and then we'll go down to the bottom of the file here and paste it. So now we're going all the way down. Paste it here. I'm just going to put something, a paragraph tag with a little copyright so we can do copyright. Do the copyright symbol in HTML 2022. Timothy Unkert, all rights reserved, oh, you know, whatever. And let's go up and just do a little styling so this can print out well. So if you're doing this, you're watching this video and you want to try this on your own, I'll show you a few different styling tricks to get the page looking nice uh, or presentable at least. Uh, so we'll do style here. And then um, typically when you print a page, you want to have a half margin on each side. So I'm going to just create uh, study styles for the body. And we'll have margin left, and that's going to be 0 0.5. And we can do inches in CSS if we want, and that's what I'm going to put it uh, because that's what we want, 0 0.5 inches, okay, on both sides, the left and the right, okay? So, and then the other thing we want to do is do something like styling the divs, all right? And we'll say each of the divs, I'm going to give a display of inline block, and we'll give a width of 49%. Now you might think 50% is the way to go, but they tend to wrap when it's 50%. So that doesn't work so well. And we'll also give a height, it seems to be good spacing of 1.75 inches per problem. So that'll be two problems lined up next to each other. Okay, so we've got that styling. The other thing I wanted to create a few divs here just at the top of the uh, worksheet. So we'll do one for the name. And we'll probably put this in a paragraph tag here. And we'll do, let's just use M in here. Uh, one for the date. And this is going to be next to the name on the other side of the paper. Uh, and then below the name, 
we'll do, what are we going to do below the name? Probably do the period. Okay. And then the last part we'll do uh, the teacher. Okay. All right. So now let's go here and go to my files, my Linux files here. It's in my C line products. It's in this untitled. We want to do foil HTML. So we open this up. We notice the spacing's a little weird on these dips. So we got to fix that. But notice the problems are created pretty cool. All right. And if we go all the way down, boom, we've got a thousand problems. Pretty sweet. And I'll show you how to print this in a moment. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do here is just let's do a multi cursor here and we'll create a specific style for each of these. So we'll say style equals height and we'll do 0 0.25 inches. Here. Okay, so that should be saved. We'll refresh and then look at that. And maybe um, on these bottom two, so it'd be this one, the date and the period, we can do something like margin bottom 0 0.75 inches, something like that. Okay, and then if we refresh, uh, no, we didn't want that. We didn't want the, uh, we didn't want this one. Okay, so let me go here. Cut this out here. I want this here, I believe. <laughs> uh, it should be under the teacher. Uh, no, not under the date. That's where I messed up. The other one should be under the period. That's right. Okay. So let me X this out. This one, we need to go here. Okay. So now if I refresh, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Okay. So to print this, I'm going to go up here and go right to print. And we're going to save this as a PDF. Now, when you bring this up, this will bring up the worksheet. This is where I was running into when I was creating 100,000 problems. Like, say, you want to do 100,000 problems over the weekend just for practice for, you know, that that's getting a little bit ridiculous here. Um, but I came into problems with opening this up uh, when I was at 100,000 problems. So, you know, C++ would probably be good for that. Now, when I go to more settings, typical here, this will be checked, headers and footers. And if you look at that, uh, that'll have, you know, these little headings here and down here. We don't want that. So you want to uncheck that. Okay. And then you'll have your worksheet. So let's save it. Let's just save it to, yeah, we'll call it, uh, yeah, we'll just save it to our downloads and we can open it up in our downloads. Got some other stuff here. Where did I save that? Thousand foil problems. Here we go. Okay. So we're going to open it up and you know, you got a nice worksheet and this is now a hundred pages. That's probably enough. <laughs> All right. So we created that in C++ and just to show you also, now we'd want to include the same styling in our solutions, but I'm not going to bore you with that. So if you go to our solutions here, we see that we have our solution. So we have 133 X squared, 216 X, plus 11 is our first solution. Then we have 75 X squared plus 345 X plus 270. Now you can play with the numbers you want, all that. But that's basically, you know, how you would create it in C++. Cool. All right, let's do the same thing now in Python. All right, so I'm going to go up here and C line allows you to create Python files. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and create a new Python file. We'll call this foil. Uh, let's just do foil.py. Okay, so we've got our Python file. All right, so the first thing we want to do is import the random module. That's going to give us uh, random numbers. And actually what we're going to do is just configure the Python interpreter. So that's a little bonus here. Uh, I can go to add interpreter, add local interpreter. And yeah, we will create a virtual environment. I'm going to click OK. It's creating its virtual environment here uh, and click apply. Okay. And then, okay. And you'll see it's going here. It's updating the skeletons. That's going to take a moment and it's indexing. Come on, you can do it. 
you can do it. It's recording, so it's taking a little bit longer to update. Um, you know, so I'm recording this on a Chromebook too. It's like a $200 Walmart Chromebook. So you can build these programs on anything. You know, you don't have to have the most advanced computer, but uh, generally a Chromebook with four gigabytes of RAM uh, and I swap enable a couple RAM there and, you know, and, you know, certainly 64 gigabytes. This one only has 32 gigabytes of storage, so it works. But, uh, you know, I would go, if I was going to get a new one, I'd probably get 64 gigs because they're coming down in price. Anyway, so we're going through, we're updating the skeletons and that is all done. And now we're indexing. You can see it kind of running here at the bottom. We have to let it index here. And I'm going to come back. I'll just come back when this is done. Okay, and we're back and it's imported. Now we can actually give this a um, alias. So we can say as something like Rand is a lot of times so you don't have to type out OM, that's a lot extra. But let's let's make it funny. Let's do it. Import random as Rand McRanRan. Okay, so now I'm actually, I, that's that's totally pointless because I and now I have to type more. But uh, we're gonna type Rand McRanRan when we gotta wanna get a random number. Okay, so First of all, let's go through the list and create our variables as we did with C++. So I'm going to say 4i in range, and we'll do 1,000. And that's going to go from 0 to 999, okay? So that's going to give us our loop. And we're going to create our variables. So n1 is going to be uh, ran. Actually, we have to type, let's see, ran, mcran ran dot rand int. And we're going to go from 1 to 25 here. Okay, and let's duplicate that. And so we're going to do, let's see, uh, two, three, and four there. And uh, okay, and then we want to actually above this, we want to open a file. So I'm going to say f equals open, and we'll call this foil2.html. And then FS is going to be for solutions is open uh, foil to solutions.html. Okay. And then we'll go outside of this loop down here and we'll make sure to close it. So we'll do f.close and fs.close. Okay. All right. So now we've got this. And each time through the for loop, let's first write. So we're going to do f dot write, and what we're going to do is we're going to write. Let's write. Uh, we don't need an f string. Let's just write uh, the opening div and a slash n there to uh, move it down to the new line, and we'll do the same thing for the solution. So we'll do fs dot write, and we'll do div and uh, solution there. Yeah or not a solution, a, a new line. Okay, so now we wanna create our functions. All right, so first function is gonna create the problem. So we're gonna do DEF. We don't, in Python, we don't have to specify what we're returning. Uh, so we're just gonna type DEF create problem. And I'm actually gonna use snake case because that's our, our way in Python. It's more Pythonic. So, and again, we don't have to specify what type of integer. So we're just gonna take in, or what type of variable. We're gonna take a num1, num2 it's dynamically typed versus statically typed which c++ is statically typed and take an index okay so in statically typed languages you have to declare the type of variable first you don't have to do that in python 
So there's pros and cons with that, but anyways. So we're gonna return, let's return an F string here. And we're gonna do uh, the paragraph tag, and then we're gonna do the number of the problem, so index. And we'll do a parentheses here and we'll say simplify. And then we'll start with our um, binomial. So we'll pass in num1, that's a coefficient in front of x, plus num2, uh, close out that binomial, then we'll do num3 times x plus num4, okay, and close out that binomial, and we have a period at the end, close out our paragraph, and a new line. Okay, so that's our function, a little bit cleaner than in C++, I have to say. So this is a little bit more human readable. Um, and we have one error. I forgot to put in range here. Okay. All right, so now let's go up here. We also want to create our solution. So in Python, you have generally two lines after the functions or people get upset. All right, so we're going to type def and then create underscore solutions or underscore, yeah, underscore solution. And we'll do uh, num1, pass in num1, num2, num3. I could call these n1, n2, n3, but you know, it's then it might get a little confusing even though that's what we're passing in. Uh, but as parameters, I'm gonna name them slightly different than the actual arguments that we're gonna pass in. Okay, uh, so now let's create our variable. So first, it's gonna equal num1 times num2. Outer is going to equal num1 times num4. Inner is going to equal num2 times num3. And I don't know why I'm putting semicolons, probably because I just went from C++ and I'm uh, switching the type here and it's messing me up a little bit. And then last is going to be num2 times num4. I wanted to put a semicolon at the end there. And we'll do middle equals uh, outer plus inner. And we're gonna return and we'll do an F string again. So we'll start with the paragraph tag here and we're gonna pass in the index, so the problem number. And then we're going to say first times X, it's gonna be X squared. So we're writing some HTML in this. Um, and then plus, uh, we're going to pass in middle times X and then plus last there. And then we'll close out our paragraph and do a new line character just for formatting of the HTML file. Let's do another parenthesis or another line there just to make sure our formatting is nice. So now that we've got our functions created here. Uh, we're going to write to the file as we go through. So what we're going to do is we're going to do f.write and we'll call create problem and pass in uh, our variables. So n1, n2, n3, n4, and uh, i plus 1. And we'll do fs.write and we'll call create solution and we'll do n1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and i plus 1 for our index okay and then we want to write our closing divs so we're going to do f dot write uh, close out our div here do a new line character just for formatting fs dot write and we'll close out the div here and also do a new line for formatting there Okay, and uh, that's it for our method. Now we're about 20 lines less of code, so that's nice. Even with the double spaces, you know, the Pythonic double, double lines after each function, uh, we're still about 20 lines less, okay? So let's open up a terminal. Now to run the Python program, we're just gonna type Python 3 and then the name of the program, and that's gonna run it. So we're gonna do Python 3 foil.py, and we've got an error. So what did I mess up? Line 16. Ah, yeah, there's one thing I forgot to do. Okay, so when I open this, I just want to have after each of these 
a comma, and then we're going to write to the file. So, okay. So that was an error. All right. So ignore that. Okay. Let's clear that out. Let's try this again. Okay. Done. So right now, uh, you know, we're done with that. Um, and you'll see that foil2.html was created. Again, this has, you know, if we go down, it has a thousand. And that was like at just as fast uh, as I could notice. Uh, obviously, C++ ran slightly faster once you actually compiled the program. But to not have to compile it and just type Python 3 in the name of the program. Uh, so Python, Python is winning on this one. So now we would do the same thing. So we got all our problems created here. I'm moving up and down. We would create our same styling for each of these. Okay. Uh, as you can see, the solutions was also created here. So we've got that. Created the two files almost instantaneously for a thousand problems. So I would say Python wins for my needs right now. But we also want to test out Ruby. And to do that, I'm going to switch to my other computer. So stay tuned for that. Okay, we're back on my other computer here, another Chromebook here, and we are going to create uh, the same worksheet in Ruby. Now, I gotta warn you, I'm not uh, as proficient in Ruby as, say, C or Python. Uh, so, I'm gonna look a few things up as we go, but we're gonna follow the same basic method. So, I'm gonna create a directory here. Let's just create a directory called FOIL, in case I wanna make this a repository. And within FOIL, we'll create a new Ruby file. We'll call that FOIL also. Okay. All right. So we've got our FOIL uh, file here. And what we first want to do is create our variables. So let's go down here. And because we're going to have a function, a couple functions, but again, um, Ruby is dynamically typed. So we'll do n1 equals rand. We're going to do a random number from 1 to 25. Let's just duplicate that. Okay, and we'll have our n2, n1, n2, n3, n4. Okay, and so we got our variables. And now we want to actually, actually, we want to create these in a loop, don't we? And Ruby, let me start again. Ruby uh, is a little bit more friendly to while loops. So I'm going to say i equals zero and we'll say while uh, i is less than 1000 do. And in here, now we'll create our variables. And right at the end of the while loop, we want to increment i. So we'll do i equals i plus one. We won't forget that. We'll say n1 equals um, rand and we'll do our range 1 to 25. And now we'll duplicate it. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so we've got our variables created. We also want to probably write to files. So to do that, uh, and notice I looked up how to create a random number. So let's look that up. Let's look up... Um, how to write to a file in Ruby, okay? Uh, RubyGuides.com, let's see. Okay, so, you know, looking for documentation on how to do this. So, so file equals file.open users.txt, okay? Let's go down, how do we write to one? We can file.close, so let's give, give an example, okay? So we could do this. We could open a file with the right. So it looks kind of like, uh, yeah, it looks kind of like, um, in, in basically Python, except I'm wondering if we can do that through the loop. So we'll say file.open and we'll call this, let's call this foil. 3.html, we're going to write to it. Now my ID is not giving me any, let's see, do I need to do something above? Oh yeah, file equals file.open. So let's say uh, we'll do F, F equals file.open. OK, 
Okay, let's try fs equals file. There we go. File.open. Again, we're recording, so sometimes this is, uh, we'll just do foil-3 uh, solutions.html. We're going to do, we're going to write to this. And down here, we want to close these off just like in Python. So we're going to do f.close. Okay. And notice we don't need the parentheses in Ruby. And then fs.close here. Okay, so now we're writing to the files, but we actually need to now create our functions before we actually start to really write to them. We can, let's, let's do a f dot write, yeah, and we'll write a string, which is our div, and do a new line here. So similar to Python, and then fs dot write, uh, no, not that the wrong thing right okay and we'll do again an opening div with the new line just for formatting okay so you can see this one's you know, ruby's a lot similar to python in that way okay so we want to create our first uh, function to create our problem so in ruby you also do def to define a function we'll call this create underscore problem do it snake case we're going to take in uh, our parameters will be num1 num2, num3, num4, and index, okay? And then um, we don't need colon. We just have def and end. So that's a little difference with Python. And uh, to return something, we don't actually have to put the keyword return if it's just one line. Now, what I want to look up to is how do we write format strings? So how do we write format strings in Ruby, okay? Uh, Ruby guide format. So how do we format the strings? Um, okay, so yeah, so okay, so you see this module operator, and then we're passing an integer here. Okay, and how would we do that with multiple ones? Uh, let's see. So I want I want to do that with multiple. Let's see, .NET Pearls. Pearls another one I should test out, but maybe not today. Um, okay, so we do it, yeah, cool. So you're passing it in like regular C. So I don't know if you can see this, but percentage D for an integer, percentage S for a string, pretty cool. Okay, so that's kind of like the C format with print F. Interesting. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to return, but again, we don't have to, um, we don't have to, write the word return if it's just the last line. So what we're going to do is a paragraph tag here, and we'll do a percent D for the problem number, uh, do a space here, and we'll say simplify. Okay, and I'm liking this. I'm liking it. Uh, percent D X plus percent D. These are all integers we're passing in times percent D X plus percent D. Uh, and put a period here, close out the parentheses, do a new line here. We'll do our little modular thing, and then we'll pass in num1, num2. Actually, first we want to pass in the index, right? So index, num1, num2, num3, num4. Okay, and that is that, all right? That's our function. Pretty sweet. That's some sweet syntax, even a little bit nicer than Python. All right, now we want to create our solution. So we do another function, def create solution. Again, we're going to take in as parameters, num1, num2, num3, num4. Now, when I pass them in down in this while loop, they're going to be arguments. That's what the, so that's the difference. And index here. Okay, and again, well, the last line we're going to return, but we'll say first, equals num1 times num2. Uh, outer equals uh, num1 times num4. Inner equals num2 times num3. And then last equals num2 times num4. And then middle equals outer plus inner. 
And now we'll return, uh, so our string at the end here. So we're gonna do a parentheses, and then we'll uh, do a percentage D for the index. Do our little closing parentheses in a space just to make it look nice. And we're gonna do a percent D for our first variable uh, times X squared. And then a uh, another percent D times X and then plus percent uh, D for our last one, we're gonna do this little, what I, I think of it as a module operator, but we'll do index, then first, middle, last, okay? All right, so that's the string we're returning. We're getting some warnings here. I don't know if you can see that, but local variable N1 is not used. Okay, so yeah, that's cool. So my ID is telling me you haven't messed anything up too bad just yet, but give it time, give it time. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to do f.write, and now we're going to ooh, also formatting. Hello, I want a slash n here. almost forgot that. I would have made it look kind of yeah, not so nice. All right, so now we'll call the create problem, and we're going to pass in n1, n2, n3, n4, and then for our index, we'll pass in the argument i plus 1. We'll do fs.write, uh, and we'll do create solution, we'll do n1, n2, n3, n4, i plus 1. Um, and anything else we need to do? Oh, yeah, we need to close out our uh, parentheses. So we'll do f.write, um, and we'll close out our divs. So we'll close out this div here, do a slash n for formatting. And actually, let me just duplicate this line and go in here and we'll write fs, okay. All right, that's our program. We got a green check here. That, that means, hey, no problems found. All right, um, so what I actually wanna do is open up terminal here. And I don't have my keyboard shortcut. So let me show you another little trick I do because I like the Sublime keyboard shortcuts on my JetBrain stuff. So I'm going to go to key map, go from XWin, the Sublime text, go to tool windows here, go down to the terminal. That's all F12. We don't really have an F12 in the Chromebook as far as I know. Add keyboard shortcut, I like Control-T. Go OK, apply. OK. I hadn't set this ID up yet before I recorded, so let's do Control T. And uh, I don't know, I might have an issue. <laughs> let's list out the stuff. Let's CD into foil and see if it runs anyways. It's giving me like a little bit of an issue. So we'll do Ruby uh, and then the name of the file, foil.rb. And the command's not found. So what did, it, what did it say I have to do? Uh, oh, I got to run this. You know what? It'll run here. That was, let me clear all this stuff out. Let me CD into uh, RubyMine projects. This is Ruby worksheets and foil. Okay. Um, all right. And let me actually change the settings so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, let's go here and we'll change our fonts to 20. Okay, and close this out and now let's open this up. So I'm in the directory, let's clear all that junk out there. Uh, list out the file and to run it, I'm just gonna do ruby foil.rb and boom, it ran like pretty much instantaneously. And we've got the foil3.html. Let's make sure everything came out okay. The other thing here that I could do is let me just run this. And okay, so we just ran it through the IDE. So I don't really need to do that. Um, so I just ran it again through the IDE. But anyway, so uh, foil3.html, let's open that. And so we're going through here. No, sometimes I get this weird highlighting issue where it kind of like fades away. But if I scroll on down, 
Um, scroll on down here. You know, you see we got a thousand problems here, easily created. Go here. We've got you know, a thousand solutions easily created. Okay. Um, yeah, and actually, I just ran it through the IDE there. Same thing I could do with C++ or, or, or Python um, with the IDE. But now let's take a look at our file here. So this is our original file. Let me close this out. And we're at 31 lines of code. Check uh, how many lines of code was I at for my Python file. I think maybe this, yeah, we're also at 31 lines of code, okay? So, you know, we took off lines of code without having a few things in the function, but then we have like this end here. Uh, so about the same amount of code. Um, but, I mean, look at the syntax. It's so easy, so easy. So I would say almost, even though, and I'm not that experienced at Ruby, I would say almost Ruby is winning here. Uh, certainly Python or Ruby wins versus C++. And it was almost instantaneous to run the program. Let's, let's run it again. So if I run it again, and then it's running, and it's finished with exit code zero. So I ran it again. I created another 1,000 problems just then. So in terms of the time the program needs to run for 1,000 problems, um, I'm going to pick the easier syntax. So you may see some more videos depending on my randomness because I'm completely random on what I film and put on the YouTube channel. But and I, I think people watching the channel have known this by now. Um, but uh, you, know, you may see more Ruby videos and or, and or more Python videos coming up because, again, I'm going to have limited time as I'm uh, probably teaching high school math again. So, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, for my needs, either Ruby or Python wins. Um, if you have experience creating worksheets, <laughs> I don't know that many people do this in a programming language. What's your favorite? Comment in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a like as it'll help get out to more people. Also consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed to the channel. I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.